Welcome to Tiger and Cat channel. Hello, I'm Kenny Kong, your chemistry teacher. Please do remember, subscribe, like and share this channel. Today we are going to discuss about past year chapter 4, chemical bonding. Now we discuss question PSPM SK015 2018-2019. Okay, there are three parts for this question. So A1, A2, B1, B2, C1, C2. So when you answer the question right you have to answer according to the number of the question state a1 a2 clearly b1 p2 clearly don't simply answer the question without numbering okay please take note up huh? check to a1 explain why ammonia obey the optic rules but bf3 does not so for this case you have to draw the lewis structure after you draw the lewis structure you notice right ammonia there are eight valence electron around the central atom and then obey the optet rules. But for boron 4, right, right, there are only 6 valent electron, which is less than 8 valence electron. So therefore, BF3 does not obey the optet rules, which is incomplete optet structure. Okay, for A2, show the formation of this molecule using Lewis dot symbol and label the bonding form. So as we know, right, there is one lone pair for the ammonia, and then there is a one empty orbital for the boron. That's why this is a dative covalent bond or we can say it's dative bond it can form bonding and then the electron totally from the nitrogen atom so we are showing the transfer of the, uh, the electron share to the boron and then form the dative bond so this is the Lewis dot symbol and we have to label this dative covalent bond in order to get three marks Okay, for B1, determine the molecular geometry of this molecule. As usual, we have to follow the step, draw the Lewis structure. Okay, um, over here, I didn't show the step. Uh. means calculate the total valence electron, determine the central atom, and then form the bonding pair, minus 4, and then uh, the re uh, make sure the terminal atom is optic, and then the remaining electron go for the central atom. But you have to write down all the steps as well. Uh. So at last, you get this structure. So based on this structure, there are four electron pair at the central atom, two bonding pair, two lone pair. So the class of compound is Ab2E2. The electron pair arrangement is tetrahedral. So according to valence shell electron pair repulsion theory, VS EPR, the electron pair are arranged as far as possible. Okay. The strength of the repulsion is lone pair, lone pair, greater than lone pair, bonding pair, and then greater than bonding pair, bonding pair. So for this molecule geometry, the shape is V shape or bent. Okay, number B to explain why OF2 is polar or non-polar. So in this case, you have to draw the, okay, identify uh, the partially positive and then the partially negative for chlorine. So the dipole moment from partial, uh, partially positive to partially negative at last is from a dipole moment. It means the mu is not equal to zero. So how to explain? First, you must tell, uh, mention the OF bond are polar bond. Okay, and then for this molecular geometry is not arranged symmetrically that's why the dipole moment cannot cancel off each other mu not equal to zero and then there is a resultant dipole moment you can show by using this diagram therefore of2 is a polar molecule okay c1 explain the formation of metallic bond in sodium using the electron c model so you have to draw the electron c model always remember okay one sodium ion come together with one electron that's why total there are nine sodium ion that's why there are nine electrons so this is the electron c model you must label for the positive sodium ion and then the delocalized valence electron okay in this case how to explain you explain metallic bond in sodium metal is the electrostatic force between the sodium ion and a plus and the c of delocalized electron okay and then C2, why aluminium has higher boiling point than sodium? So first of all, you must know the strength of metallic bond is directly proportional to number of valence electron per atom and inversely proportional to the radius of atom. Okay, because aluminium, sodium, um, metal, so is metallic bond. So we must know the reason. So in this case, number of valence electron in aluminium is greater than sodium. So you mentioned aluminium, there are three valence electron and then sodium one valence electron. And then the positive charge of aluminium is positive three, is greater than sodium ion, positive one. 
For the second reason here, the size of aluminium is smaller than sodium. Hence, the attractive force or the metallic bond of cation towards the electron C for aluminium is stronger than sodium. Therefore, the boiling point of aluminium is higher than sodium. Question PSPM 2019-2020. So there are three parts and then part A there are another three parts. So A1, A2, A3. Let's go through the details of each part of the question. Upon reaction with fluorine, oxygen form only OF2, whereas sulfur form SF2, SF4, and FS6 molecule. So if you check, right, it's form SF4, so equal to 8. So the four bonding pair equal to 8. And then for this one, 6 bonding pair is equal to 12. Okay, this one is surface. Uh, we didn't check for the details yet. If you draw the Lewis structure, right, I think we will get the different structure for SF4. If not mistaken, it's square, square planar. And then this one is octahedral. Okay, and then now we need to explain why. Why oxygen only can form OF2? Because the first point, oxygen atom from period 2. And then sulfur is from period 3. If period 2, we know that there is no d orbital. Means it cannot be expanded. Only can obey the optic rules. But sulfur contain d orbital to form expanded optic rules. That's why it can form SS4, which is square planar. The electron pair arrangement is octahedral. Same for here also, octahedral. Okay, A2. The shape of PF5 molecule different from that of an IF5 molecule. Okay, please take note. You have to draw the Lewis structure, follow the step. You don't straight away think, oh, there are five bonding pairs for this one. Oh, this one also has five bonding pairs. No. You have to follow the step first, identify the central atom, calculate the total number of valence electron. And then form the bonding pair, and then make sure the terminal atom is optic. Is there are remaining electron, then go for the central atom, like this case. You have to follow the step. Okay. So after you draw the Lewis structure, you notice, right? Okay. This one is AB5, five bonding pair. Electron pair arrangement, trigonal bipyramidal. That, since there is no lone pair, that's why the molecular geometry also trigonal bipyramidal. For IF. 5. Total, there are 6 electron pair. Okay, 5 bonding pair, 1 lone pair. So the electron pair arrangement is octahedral. Since there is 1 lone pair right now, the molecular geometry or molecular shape is square pyramid. Okay, A3. Of these 3 possible Risonan structure for OCN negative below 3 is the best. How do you know 3 is the best? So the step 1, you need to calculate all the formal charge of each atom. If you calculate all the formal charge of each atom correctly, then you get 1 mark normally. And then you compare. Structure 1 and structure 3 has the lowest formal charge. Okay, But structure 3 is the best. Why? Because the negative 1. If we compare right, the negative 1 for oxygen and nitrogen, the negative one should go to oxygen because oxygen is more electronegative than nitrogen. So you have to explain structure 3 has the lowest formal charge compared to structure 2. And then the negative one charge belong to the most electronegative atom, the oxygen atom, if compared to structure 1 because structure 1 and structure 3 both have the lower formal charge. Clear? So you can jot down, you can explain based on your own sentences. B. Illustrate the hybridization of the central atom in SF4 using orbital diagram. Okay, as usual, we need to calculate the total number of valence electrons. 6 for sulfur, 7 for fluorine. So total is 34. 34 and then form 4 bonding pair minus 8 equal to 26. Make sure that the terminal atom is optic. So 6, 6, 6 minus 24 equal to 2. Go for the, the remaining electron, go for the central atom. So this is the Lewis structure, correct Lewis structure. Then the question one about orbital diagram for central atom. So you show, okay, ground state for sulfur is 3s2, 3p6. Over here, we notice we need one lone pair, okay, one pair of lone pair, so you remain it. And then another one need to excite it, the 3p, the electron at the 3p orbital need to excite it in order to form the four bonding pair. So now this is the excited state, and then continue. The hybrid state of um, 3s and 3p, and the 3D mixed together from the S3 
3D orbiter. Okay, don't forget, there is another 4 empty 3D orbiter. Okay, next, then you show and label the overlapping of orbiter in the molecule. So you must draw like trigonal bipyramidal. So 5 sp3d orbiter and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 2 p foreign orbiter and then don't forget label sigma, 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 sigma. And then this is the lone pair for the fs4. Okay, now question C. Explain the difference in melting point between elements in group 1 and group 17. As we know, right, group 1 is matter, group 17 is non-matter. So we need to explain one by one. First point, elements in group 1 has interparticle metallic bond respectively. And then group 17 non-matter has intermolecular van der Waal forces respectively. Metallic bonds are stronger than van der Waal forces. That's why need more energy is required to overcome the stronger metallic bond. Hence, now we need to compare. The melting point of element in group 1 are higher than the melting point of the element in group 17. That's why this question total 5 marks. If you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe, like and share this channel. See you again. Thank you.